water, food, a place to sleep, somewhere to do homework. The things we take for granted, perhaps even given to us by default, could be taken away from us at any moment, completely disappear into the abyss that is homelessness. More than half a million people currently meet the definition of homelessness in the United States. On any given night, about 14,000 people experience homelessness in Metro Atlanta. Georgia ranks sixth in the nation for states with the highest number of unsheltered people. Statistics are just numbers. They do not show the tears streaming down the face of a mother who cannot buy a warm meal for her three children. They do not echo defeat on the face of a father who cannot make it home on time to tuck his children into bed. They do not hear the distressed cries of a toddler who lies in the cold without a roof over their head. They do not hear the whole story because statistics do not show these extremes. Homelessness is so much more than just a label. It's the burden of not being able to support yourself or your family. It's gas cards and food stamps and the constant reminder that you are dependent on money that isn't your own. It's not being able to afford medication or insurance and knowing that even if you had a job, you wouldn't be able to get to work every morning. It's the slow depreciation of motivation that facilitates the negative image that society holds on the homeless community. People think homelessness is someone sitting in the corner with dirty clothes, dingy, just laying out on, you know, the concrete, uh, on the ground or with a um, paper bag over them. That's what, pe when people say homelessness, that's what they equate homelessness, but this is what homelessness looks like. I have a MPH. I'm a mom. I'm someone's daughter. I'm someone's friend. So this is the face of homelessness. There are so many misconceptions revolving around homelessness. Although it can happen to anyone, it is still viewed as if people in poverty are not trying hard enough, with no thought given to the circumstances that cause them to be in that position. Um, the typical stereotypes that I see that are attributed to the homeless are that it's someone who has not tried, who's not willing to try, and who is just looking for a handout. These are people just like any of us. Um, they are educated. They're not stupid, they're not ignorant, and because they don't have it doesn't mean that they haven't tried. It's too lazy to get a job, or they just need to you know, tighten their bootstraps and get to work and they won't be homeless, when there's multiple reasons of why a person can be homeless. It could be due to divorce or domestic violence or even um, medical illness. The effects of homelessness are extremely hard to overcome by oneself. Yet most people turn their heads and overlook the problem, as it doesn't directly affect them. One of the things that the misconceptions do is it does not identify the need. So we are not really able to address the problem the way that we need to. We're not able to speak to the needs of the homeless family or the homeless person because we don't have um, the right perception of the complexities that lead to their state of homelessness, and we're not able to put together programs, resources, or even laws and policies that are, are going to alleviate the problem or eliminate it completely. To discuss the prevalence of homelessness in our area, we talked to two homeless liaisons for Fulton County, Seanette Miller and Sarah Smith. A homeless liaison is a school social worker that works mainly with our homeless students and kind of acts as an advocate um, as well as a liaison, kind of linking the mom and the student uh, to services that may be in the community and then of course the services that are housed within the school. I've really seen, it's not so much just the homelessness but just poverty. I think poverty is kind of the issue that people struggle with, anybody, you know, from any socioeconomic class can have mental health issues or divorce or a fire, things like that. But it's the poverty that's really the biggest barrier because when you don't have a car, you don't have a stable place to live, you're constantly worried about food, you don't have shoes, you don't have, you know, your basic needs met, it makes school really, really difficult. Um, just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, you can't focus on the 
um, or abstract things like geometry and philosophy. If you're hungry, you're tired, you're up all night because you know the police were at your house or whatever, you know these issues went on which people in poverty really face. There's definitely a growing issue of homelessness in North Fulton County, and I think that's mainly due to the lack of affordable housing. I have had students um, who have been put out of their homes um, for various reasons. Sometimes it might be due to their sexuality, and it's really tough to see them going from house to house. I think one of the incidences that really stands out to me is um, a student that I had that was actually sleeping in the garage area of a Target. And that was really tough because of course in school you have the pressures of trying to get your work done. You need to have access to a computer. Um, you need to have access to clean clothing. And this was challenging for him. Homelessness is, is very real in, in North Fulton County. And even in this school, we have some students who have been identified as homeless. The intense situations homeless people have to deal with are often not taken care of. Rainbow Village is a transitional housing program that aims to solve this lack of aid. Rainbow Village, being the transitional housing program, we um, provide a stable environment for our residents. However, they uh, are full-time workers, so they do pay a percentage of the utilities and the rent. So it's a way of showing them how to be self-sufficient. So um, in a nutshell, we pretty much provide a stable environment for them to educate themselves and to, um, and to reinsert back into society, but now as a self-efficient um, citizen. Uh, some of the parents who are here have more than one job. So it's very hard and it's not that they're, they're not trying. So the misconception is that these are people that people don't have because people don't try. And that's not necessarily true. Um, most of the time, the people who are coming here to Rainbow Village don't have the support system that they need. Uh, there are informal supports and there are formal supports. Usually, the families who are at Rainbow Village do not have the informal supports because they uh, are estranged from their families. They are. The families just do not have the means and resources to be able to help the person. Homelessness is definitely something to be aware of because there's different faces of homelessness. Um, you know, when you're in inner city, you're taught and conditioned to believe that homelessness involves someone that's looking like a bum or pushing around a car or living on the bridge. Um, however, when you work in an organization like Rainbow Village, homelessness can pretty much mean anything from couch surfing to living in a, in a, in a long-term um, hotel to uh, living in your car. So there's different faces of homelessness and I think Atlanta uh, being the melting pot that it is, it's sort of a perfect place to educate people about there's not only one face of homelessness. I think it's very important that we always remember to look out for one another. And Rainbow Village, other nonprofits, and human service agencies provide a needed service. With the help of these nonprofit organizations, many people have risen above the poverty line. The stories of those who overcame the effects of poverty shine a new light on overcoming the obstacle that is homelessness. I was not working a full-time job and I was not making as much as my rent was uh, demanding of me. So there was not a, a balance. I wasn't making as much as I was renting. So I had to leave because I was unable to make rent. I've been using alcohol, crack cocaine, and heroin for the past 41 years. It was the not knowing where I was going to sleep, what was going to happen, um, just the not knowing, the uneasiness. It was a lot of stress. I hated myself, and I hated a lot of people too. Um, I hated myself for what I had done what I had done to my family. Um, I know it shaped me to be appreciative. I don't have the world, I don't have the riches, the fame, the newest bag or clothes. I appreciate and I'm grateful for everything that I have. So for every relationship that I have here with the other families, the other ladies, 
I appreciate it because everybody's story is different and everybody's walk has been different. So I appreciate everyone. After coming to the Potter House, Mark began his recovery through a spiritual revelation and by discussing his issues with others who had similar issues as him. He found a new life and a new way to live. A change in perspective is necessary in order to understand the situations of people working through poverty and homelessness. It is important to internalize the fact that it could happen to anyone at any time. All of us would be homeless if it wasn't for the hard work of our parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, guardianship, all of that. Um, so I'll start off by saying that really everyone is a step away from being homeless. It's just uh, a matter of helping and, and being selfless with the resources that you have. Too much is given, much is expected. Homelessness is a vortex that sucks you in and is extremely difficult to escape. Those willing to share their stories help to raise awareness of this growing issue and to educate others of the need to change their stigma against homeless people. When rising above the effects of poverty, it becomes apparent that it is truly possible to escape the streets.